Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 7 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. So at this point, we have our keyboard tracker taking our button presses and packaging them into a nice contained struct. So we can start writing our character controller to actually move our character around. However, in order to do that, we also need to do some planning and decide on how we want to handle physics in our game. And what I mean by physics here isn't necessarily like super realistic, you know, or... Um, your ragdoll controls, but just our character needs to know when it's falling or when it's hitting an obstacle or that it's able to interact with something in the game world. Like I say, it doesn't need to be um, perfectly realistic, but it does need to work. So we have three options with various levels of effort that we can use to actually create our physics controls. The first is to use Unity's pre-built character controller. This is kind of nice because it has, um, it handles gravity and um, the idea of grounding for us, it always knows like when the player is standing on the ground versus just hitting a random obstacle. It also has settings for handling things like slopes and steps in the world, as well as this idea called skin width, which is really um, useful for, it's kind of a cushion to, allows a little bit of overlap to avoid some weird funky collisions that can happen. It also has um, pre-built-in functions called move and simple move that are used for moving your character, and it comes with a built-in collider, so it's one less component you have to worry about. This is by far the uh, lowest level of effort that we're going to have to put in. It's the easiest way to have a quick working character controller. Um, it is worth noting that you will still need to create an actual character controller script that says when this button is pressed, move this way. But, um, like I say, it is kind of fairly pre-built. The biggest con with this character controller component, though, is that it uses physics force to um, move the character around, and it has this very kind of a slippery feel because it's relying very heavily on inertia, and it takes, you know, time to ramp up your speed and time to slow down, so it always kind of feels like you're almost on a sheet of ice. I really don't care for it. Um, and the other problem is that while this would work great for our character walking around the world, we're going to eventually want to implement ideas like vehicles and flight into this, and character controller does not account for those things. So while this would be the easiest route to go, it's probably not the best one for us. On the other end of the spectrum, the most involved system would be if we created our own custom scripts for handling physics. Um, this would give us the most control because as we're adding each feature, we can, you know, certainly customize it to be precisely what we want it to be and how we want it to work. Um, however, there is kind of a um, diminishing return on the amount of effort we would have to put in doing it this way. Um, if you do want to create your own custom physics um, system for a character controller, I would highly recommend watching um, Sebastian Legg's series. He does a series on 2D character controllers, but he really takes you through the whole system of creating kind of a, a hitbox and then casting uh, rays in order to detect if you're about to hit an object and then stopping you before you hit it that whole system, and then you could from there, you know, extrapolate that to a 3D game if you wanted to. Um, but like I say, for our purposes, it's um, it's not really going to give us the return on investment that we're looking for to spend all this time recreating all this when Unity actually has it pre-built in in a perfect kind of middle ground, which is the rigid body component. Um, if you haven't worked with them before, rigid bodies handle all of your gravity and collisions for you. However, we get to control whether we're using force or velocity, which can give us a much crisper control feel. Um, we can also control locking certain things like any rotation or movement, um, which can be really useful in making sure that our character doesn't tip over because of you know something hitting them in the head or something like that. Um, we will need to, the one thing to be cautious about with this is we will need to handle that idea of grounding that I talked about with the character controller component. Um, with the rigid body, you don't necessarily know if something, if you're standing on the ground versus you're just, you know, resting against a wall. So we will need to come up with a, a workaround to give us that information, which is going to be important if we want to jump or if we're flying, things like that. But overall, Rigid Body is going to give us enough, it's got enough pre-built for us, and it's going to give us enough of a level of control that it's really going to give us the, um, the control scheme that we're looking for for this series. So now that we know how we're going to be handling the physics, let's jump into Unity and start building out this character controller. So here we are in Unity in our basic character controller scene that we had created. We've got our player object as well as our input manager. And right now our input manager obviously doesn't have a controller to speak to, so if we play our game we're not actually going to move around when we press our keys that we set up. However, we do have basically all of the um, constituent pieces we needed. So our player already has a collider on it. 
and right now this is a box collider. We may want to change the type of collider eventually, but for right now, that'll work fine for our purposes. We are moving a box around, so kind of makes sense. Um, eventually, if we want to handle things like slopes and steps and things like that, we will want to probably move over to the capsule collider, which is kind of built to work for a, um, for a player object. Uh, but for now, we'll stick with the box collider. The other thing we will need to add is our rigid body components. So we can go to add component, click on rigid body. There's a few bits of information here. Uh, mass is just what it sounds like. It's kind of the relative mass of the object. This is really important if you're going to have objects that are like much bigger or much heavier, like say a car is going to have more mass than your player, and you want you know kind of realistic effects. You don't want your player to send a car flying across the scene. Um, Drag and angular drag are affecting how um, how the player slows down in movement for drag and slows down rotating for angular drag. And then the big important one here, the two big important ones are use gravity and is kinematic. Um, use gravity is just what it sounds like. It means that it's going to look at what our gravity setting is and it will always try to move the character down at the speed of gravity or at the rate of gravity. And is kinematic is, if you click use kin kinematic and check this off, basically what you're saying to Unity is, um, I want this to collide with things, but I'm going to handle how it moves almost 100% otherwise. So we're not going to do that right now, um, but that's what that does. Um, interpolating and collision detection are fine the way they are right now. And then there's also this field here called constraints. And this is what I was uh, mentioning before in that we can control whether we're freezing uh, position on any of the axes as well as rotation. And this is useful if you want to prevent your character from, say, tipping over to one side or the other. In fact, we are going to check off on here our X and Y, or our X and Z rather which means that it can't, um, our character can't tip forward, back, or side to side right now. However, it can rotate on its y-axis, which is this green one here. So if we did want to institute some sort of idea of it, you know, turning left to right, we could see that and it would work. So with all of that set, we can hit play and see what the rigid body does for our character right now, which as we will see, basically just kind of makes them fall down off the screen. And that's because we have gravity working. So gravity just pulls the character down, 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 down. And if you ever want to see what your, um, how your gravity is working, you go over project settings, edit project settings, and then to physics. And you'll see here the first thing we have here is gravity. And you can actually, if you ever want to change the gravity, um, put it on the x-axis or the z-axis and its default to the y-axis is negative um, 9.81 um, meters squared. And basically what that, that is actually real world physics. That is the speed at which something will, or the, the speed at which something will accelerate as it's falling due to gravity. So that all um, is good there. But now, in, so that our character doesn't just fall off the screen every time, let's build a scene around it. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to move this character up a bit, because right now it's kind of bisecting the um, zero plane on the y um, height. And so I'm going to move him up to about one, so that he is, if we rotate this, we can see that he's kind of hovering above that now. So he's hovering over the ground a little bit, and that's a good thing. I'm going to quickly save our scene, and now I'm going to start adding some objects. We're going to go over to Game Object. First I'm going to create an empty object, I'm going to call this Scene. It's going to be just a container object. And I'm going to make sure it is reset on its transform, so it's at 0, 0, 0, so that all of the other transforms are relative to the world origin, not just the Scene's origin. Now I can right-click on Scene, I'm going to create a 3D object, we're going to create a plane, and we're going to call this uh, ground. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to right click scene again, create a 3D object, and create a cube. In this cube we're going to scale up two on the X, Y, and Z axes, and I'm going to move it up one on the um, Y axis. Now obviously if we look at our game view everything is very white and washed out right now, so let's create some materials so that we can kind of differentiate these three objects. So before we do that, I'm going to move this cube over a little bit, and I'm going to rename that as well. I call this obstacle, 
because that's what it is. So in our assets folder, we can add a new folder, and we're going to call this materials. Open that up. I'm going to create material, and I'm going to call this first one player. I'm going to reduce its smoothness down to zero. I um, find the smoothness gives things kind of a plasticky look that I don't really like, so I um, tend to drop that down. You can obviously make these materials look like whatever you like. It's just good to have them look a little bit, have some contrast between all three of them so you can clearly see how things are moving and what how things are working. And so our um, albedo here, which is basically the um, visual appearance of the material, I'm going to just make this a red color. Not perfectly red, but pretty bright there. Now I'm going to duplicate this a couple times by taking Control D. I believe it's Command D on a Mac. And I'm going to rename one of these ground and the other obstacle. In the ground albedo color, I'm going to make like a light gray. And the obstacle, I will make a darker gray, not like about 50% gray. And I'm just going to simply drag each of these onto their um, respective objects in the scene, or in the, yeah, in the scene view here. So player will be dragged onto the player. The obstacle will get this obstacle. And the ground will have the ground material. Now, the only thing you really need to make sure of to make sure that this is the physics are going to work properly, and if you've just created the two 3D objects like we did here, you shouldn't have an issue with this, but just double check that your ground and your obstacle both have a mesh collider because that's really what physics um, what the physics engine looks for to say oh these two objects are colliding and therefore they um, you know they shouldn't overlap and they should stop one another so the ground definitely has one there obstacle also has one and just make sure that is trigger is not clicked because when you make something a trigger it can generally pass through other things but just what happens is it sends an event out saying oh I've been collided with and so you want to make sure that's really useful for certain things like for example you want to have you know a laser grid that when the player walks through it it sets something off perfect use for a trigger but in the cases of things where you want collisions to happen make sure that's not checked off and now what will happen I'm going to save our scene and when we hit play, because we have our player hovering a little bit, we should see that they fall right to the ground there. And that's obviously a very simple move, but it's the first step in our working physics system here. And now we can start adding in our controls and giving our character motion in the next video so that we can see that this physics is working and the collisions are working throughout our game world. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.